Joining me now is Nick Bullen. He is True Royalty TV co-founder and editor-in-chief. Nick, great to see you. Thank you for coming in. Before we talk about the address, the, the, the New King's address to the, to the nation and to the whole world, I was struck by that, that sort of meet and greet that he had in front of Buckingham Palace, and I couldn't help but to think back to the Queen after Princess Diana died and, and her coming out of the shell, ironically, from uh, Belmore Morrill Castle as well, coming back to London and doing essentially the same thing. That really turned the tide in criticism of her during those times. Uh, this could be the same kind of step for the new king, couldn't it? I think you're absolutely right. I think everybody was struck by the, the images that you're seeing right now. And I think the, the, the king and the new queen would have been as equally struck as all of us. I mean, look, the crowds are incredibly deep. People were crying, people were singing God Save the King, people were kissing his hand, he was kissed on the cheek. He would have been really, really surprised by that reaction and thrilled. And I think you're right. It sets a real market in the same way that it set a market for the Queen back in 97. It's absolutely, absolutely set a market for the new King and Queen today. And I'm sure they walked into the palace feeling overjoyed by what happened outside those And gates. you know, it did turn things around with the Queen. I mean, we, we think of, of her reign as, as one of just complete beauty without many hiccups now because of the reaction of the British public. I remember very clearly in, in uh, 1997, I mean, it was, it was anything but. There was a lot of hostility towards her and, and what they viewed as a coldness from her. And that you, you sensed a warmness from him today that I hadn't seen before. You're absolutely right. You know, 97, I was running a breakfast show there, and there, there were people calling for, where is the queen? Where is our queen? And the, the, the mood was really bad. Now, look, we didn't have that mood today, but I think there have been some naysayers wondering, what will the, what will the reaction be to the new king? Mm -hmm. You know, can he fill the boots and the shoes of this incredible monarch that went before him? And I think today, absolutely confirmed that people are really with him, behind him, and want this to work. And, you know, the the uh, the message that he did at the, the evening that you've just played a clip of was, I think, pitch perfect. Yeah. And if anybody had any doubts about him, I'm sure they will have been blown away by that incredible message tonight. Now, there was some substance there uh, as well, I mean, specifics. He, he talked about how he's going to pull back on, on all these charities. Of course, he's going to be a lot busier than he was. Uh, being a sovereign is a, is a busy occupation. The, the queen used to, to spell it out. But uh, a lot of people thought he went a little too far into, into politics and into the various political concerns that included some of the charities. We, is, is that another... Uh, conscientious move on his part to try to, to pull back a little from the politics that he got into as, as prince? Absolutely. Look, you know, I've made a number of TV shows with him over the years, and he's a fantastic, fantastic man. But if you watch um, any of the programs that he's made, he's always been very clear about um, his role as Prince of Wales allowed him to speak out. But he knew that became, when he became king, and, and became a constitutional monarch, it was a different job. The job spec is really quite different. And he knows that. And he was reminding everybody today that he is fully aware of what he is and isn't allowed to do now. Yeah. And I'm sure he will do exactly what he said in that speech and basically play by the rules. Now, there was another point that maybe people are reading too much into it, but uh, he, he talked about the role of his two sons uh, going forward, and I want to play the sound bite. It's a, it's a minute long, and you'll see who gets the most attention, for obvious reason, but let's roll tape and get your reaction. Go ahead. As my heir, William, now assumes the Scottish titles, which have meant so much to me, he succeeds me as Duke of Cornwall and takes on the responsibilities for the Duchy of Cornwall, which I have undertaken for more than five decades. Today, I am proud to create him Prince of Wales, to Wissog Cymru, the country whose title I've been so greatly privileged to bear during so much of my life and duty. With Catherine beside him, our new Prince and Princess of Wales will, I know, 
continue to inspire and lead our national conversations, helping to bring the marginal to the center ground where vital help can be given. I want also to express my love for Harry and Meghan as they continue to build their lives overseas. Okay, so a minute for William, seven seconds uh, for Harry, and, and no mention of any titles for Harry. And we should mention that some of the changes expected to be made by King include only heirs to the throne and immediate families will receive full titles. Uh, so does that mean that, that maybe Meghan Markle was just had her title taken away? Well, not quite. I think that was a masterclass in soft diplomacy. He made it very clear who is important in the future here, and that's William and Catherine and their children. And William gets all the titles, the Scottish titles, the Cornish titles, the Prince of Wales, everything that goes with it. Charles was saying very clearly, he is the future, yeah. he and Catherine are the future, and that's who I'm with. Harry and Meghan, I love them, but they're building a new life overseas. Good luck to them. All right. It's very interesting. Nick, great to see you. Thank you for your analysis. We really appreciate it. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>